Let's begin making our foot using the dimensions that we measured previously. We'll do this by creating a square with the dimensions of 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. This can be done by clicking on the rectangle tool in the sketch tab, then clicking on the grid to select it as our sketch plane and clicking on the origin to begin sketching our square. We can now type in 50 millimeters and then push tab on our keyboard to go to the next dimension and then type in 50 millimeters again, push enter on your keyboard to accept the dimensions and then click in the quadrant that we desire the square to be in. Let us begin making the curvature of the foot. We can use the spline tool for this. The spline is located under the sketch tab. We need to select our sketch plane, so click on the sketch to select it. And now we need to start making the spline. Click in the top right, and then the bottom middle, and then the top left. Now the spline tool is still locked on our cursor, so if we move it around it would edit our spline. If we return to the top left and just push enter on our keyboard now, it'll create the spline. Let's add the vertical cylinder we'll be using to connect this foot to the leg of the robot. We can do this by using a cylinder from the primitives tab. If you click on it, it'll create a cylinder and place the cylinder at the bottom middle of our square. Make the height of the cylinder 15 millimeters. Push tab on your keyboard to go to the next dimension and we have to make the radius 5 millimeters. Push enter on your keyboard to create the cylinder. Now we can get a basic idea of what our foot's going to look like. So if you click on this arrow up here, we can change our view to perspective, which is a more realistic view. We need to clean up our sketch geometry a little bit. We'll do this using the trim tool, and we'll use the trim tool to delete the rest of the square, since we need a clean path for our sweep tool. The trim tool is located under the sketch tab. When using the trim tool, you first have to select the sketch, so just click on our sketch, and then proceed to click on each side of our square to delete it. We're almost ready to use the sweep tool, but first, however, we need a profile to sweep from. Let's use the circle on the side of a cylinder as our profile. To make this cylinder, we just go up to the Primitive tab again and click on Cylinder, and then hover your mouse over the end of our foot. Type in 5 millimeters for the height and push Tab to go to the next dimension, and then type in 5 millimeters for the radius. Push Enter on your keyboard to accept the cylinder. Now we have to rotate the cylinder to its side. To do this, we use the Move tool under the Transform tab click on the move tool, and then click on the object you wish to move. Reorient the camera using the home button to get a side profile so we can rotate our cylinder onto its side. Grab the vertical arrow now to move the cylinder down by about two millimeters. Notice we still need to make our face more tangential to the spine, so return to the top view and rotate it about 18 degrees clockwise. Push enter on your keyboard to accept the changes. We are now ready to use the sweep tool to make the back curvature of the foot. First though, reorient the camera. We can use the home button for that. And select the sweep tool from the construct tab by clicking on it. Now select our profile selector, and then select the profile that we want, which is the circle made by the cylinder. Select the path, which is our spline. Click and drag the arrow along the spline to create the sweeped shape. Push enter on your keyboard to accept this shape. These two toes now are at unequal lengths since the toe on the right started out with a 5 mm long cylinder. Let's lengthen the toe on the left by clicking on the object, moving the cursor off of it, and then back onto it to select the circle. 
go down to the pill and select the push pull function. Pull the arrow out by 5 millimeters and then push enter on the keyboard to accept the change. We still need to create the middle toe. To do this we'll just use a cylinder from the primitives menu. Place it along the middle axis. Make it about 30 millimeters tall and once again 5 millimeters for the radius. Push enter on your keyboard to create the cylinder. Once more, we have to use the Move tool to rotate our cylinder. Click on the cylinder, and then rotate the camera so we have a better view, and rotate the cylinder by 90 degrees. Then move the cylinder downwards by 15 millimeters so it's on level with the rest of the foot. Now we can move the cylinder back through the base of the foot, so that way we have the back toe that sticks out. Push enter on your keyboard to accept the changes. Now we need to make the middle toe longer, so we do this by selecting the object, moving the cursor off of it, and selecting the circle. Go down to the pill and select the push-pull tool and then pull the toe out by about 41 millimeters. Push enter on your keyboard to accept the change. We can now make the weapon. Go to the top view and make sure to deselect the previous shape and now go click on polyline under the sketch tab. Click on our spline to select it as the sketch plane. Once we've selected it as the sketch plane click on the first point of the spline. Now make a zigzag pattern starting at the top and going down to the bottom ending with the last point on the spline. We can now use the extrude tool to create this as a three-dimensional object. Click on extrude under construct and then click on our shape. Extrude it down by four millimeters Make sure it's on the join function and not cut. And then push enter on your keyboard to accept the extrusion. Since we've been making these as individual components, we need to join them together or else we can just pull them apart. I'm going to undo that movement by just clicking on the undo button. There we go. Use the Combine tool to begin joining the components together. First select one component, and then click on the second component. Push Enter on your keyboard to accept the combination. Do this to the three different components of our part to make sure it's one solid object. You can double check that it's a single component if you can move the entire shape and it stays stuck together. We can now also delete the unnecessary sketch. Click on it to select the sketch and push delete on your keyboard. Let's add some rounded edges to this to make it look a little more organic using the fillet tool. The fillet tool is under the modify tab. Click it to select it. And begin selecting the edges around our vertical cylinder. You can now click and drag the arrow that appears to increase or decrease the size of the fillet. Or you can just type in 3 millimeters. Push enter on your keyboard to accept the fillet. Let's add the fillet for the toes now. Once again, select the fillet tool from the modify tab. And select the edges on the front of the toes. Make sure to get the one on the back too. Use a four millimeter fillet. You can either drag the arrow until it says four millimeters or you can just type it in. Push enter on your keyboard to accept the fillet. Lastly, let's add a little bit of color so it looks a little bit more like a duck's foot. 
select the entire object, click on the material tab, find the orange color, right click on it, and click on assign to a selection. You can close the material browser just by clicking on the close button in the top right. The duck foot is now finished. Remember to make sure to save your work before moving on to the next video.